Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are someone who enjoys talking about movies, how about clicking that subscribe button? So we have made it through level six of Jumanji, you guys. And it's time for me to rank what I consider to be the best movies of 2020 so far. <laughs> Now, as always, you guys, this is just my own personal opinion, my own personal preference. There is no poll taking uh, to get this particular list. Now, off of my list, I have five movies that are on demand, two movies that are on Netflix, and then the rest of them are either on HBO, Prime, or Disney+. Plus. Oh, you guys, I totally forgot I was going to do this video without my glasses. People, well, I had somebody call me out on my, on the ring light. I know it's probably very annoying. Okay, we're gonna do it, you guys. I look so weird without my glasses. Oh my god, I hope this thing does not like shut off on me because I'm super blind, you guys. I cannot see myself. Um, oh, one thing before I do continue on, I do want to let you know what technically the qualifications are to make it on my list. I'm not looking for like technicality, I'm not looking with how it did in the box office, you know, for those couple movies I made in the box office or how well it did on VOD or how much is streaming. I really don't care about that or like the general public's acceptance of a movie. Now I'm a very simple person you guys so I really don't have a lot of qualifications or a lot of like the technical or like out there you know like Oscar worthy or having to be in theater a certain amount of times. No none of that for me you guys. You just have to be enjoyable, entertaining, and memorable. That's it. That's all that you need to qualify to be on my particular list. Now for that let's go ahead and get on with the rankings. Now coming in the 10th place would be the poster right behind me, Birds of Prey and the Emancipation and One Fabulous. Harley Quinn. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that wrong, you guys. I can't see, so can't read it off. Um, or Harley Quinn, it should just be called the Harley Quinn movie because the Birds of Prey didn't really unite until like later on, in, like more towards the end of the movie. But it was a really fun movie. One of the main things that I really enjoyed from it is the uh, stunt work, which of course is gonna have awesome uh, stunt work because the uh, stunt coordinator is the same one who does the stunts for uh, John Wick. And the fact that we have a female lead, we have really kick-ass females coming out in the well the birds of prey again it should have just been called harley quinn and then now that they are together the birds of prey if we were to have got a sequel or if we were to get a sequel i feel that then the sequel should have been called birds of prey but this one should have just been called harley quinn or the emancipation of one fabulous or fatibulous whatever that you know it is the villain ewan mcgregor was also really good in the film coming in in ninth place would be the king of Staten island now i said this in uh, two previous videos which was the actual uh, review for it and then of course when i talked about it in my monthly rankings this was a very surprising uh film for me i didn't expect to enjoy it as much as i did Really, it's about growing up and trying to get responsibility. It's just about growth, and I think it was a really, really good performance by Pete Davidson. Um, I'm not like the biggest fan of his, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't like hate him in any way whatsoever. When I was kind of on the fence of whether to watch or not, but I had actually um, heard a lot of really good things about the movie, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. And I was very, very pleasantly surprised by it. Marissa Tomain comes on this movie as well. Um, I don't think I've mentioned that um, before. Maybe in my actual review I did mention it. Let's go ahead and move on to number eight, which would be Live Twice, Love Once. I think this movie was just absolutely beautiful. Now, it's about this like brilliant mathematician. He actually invented a number uh, so that shows you just how brilliant he is unfortunately he does end up developing Alzheimer's which is a very terrible thing and it's very hard to accept but can you just imagine how difficult this is to accept for somebody of that higher intelligence where it's like I'm literally worked so hard and I know all this stuff and you're telling me there's gonna come a point in my life where I'm just not even gonna know what my name is and He's very, very hard-headed at the beginning. And it's this beautiful story of him trying to find the woman that he loves. He asked the daughter to help him find this woman. Well, actually, it was the granddaughter. And then somehow the, the, the daughter ended up finding out. Of course, the daughter at first wasn't particularly excited about this. Because it's like, well, was it mom, the love of your life? And it's like, no, it was, you know, I loved your mom dearly. But this is who who I love. It's just a, a really nice story because he says that now that he knows that he's going to forget her, he doesn't want to forget her. So he just really wants to go and see her one last time before he officially 
forgets who she is, who he is, who his daughter is. Certain things that happened I really didn't see coming. I thought it was gonna go completely different from where it went. And I really, really enjoyed how it ended. I think it was absolutely beautiful the way that they the way that that really just came together even that final shot was just oh it was it was stunning you guys coming in seventh place would be hbo's bad education this one is actually based on a true story that happened like in the early 2000s inside an island during the end credits it does say that this is the biggest thievery that was done within a school district and American history. I think that's what it said. Something like that. Now, so a lot of people may know about this. Um, I don't know if this really made it into national news or if it was just local. The story originally actually broke with the school newspaper with one of the students who was really investigating and everything and, and she's actually the one that, that broke it before it got the public media attention. Moving on to number six and that would be Nobody Knows I'm Here which stars Jorge Garcia which is Hurley from Lost. I think it's absolutely another beautiful, beautiful movie um, just about losing your voice losing who who you were and being traumatized as a kid um, how that affects you as a, as a grown-up Jorge's character Memo who was a beautiful singer but because he didn't have the look because he was overweight the producer said no you're you're not gonna make it you're not gonna sell your records um, with that body so we're gonna we're gonna put a body double we're just gonna use your voice but he's gonna be the the actual body and who girls are going to be drooling over and fantasizing about and i mean memo was really just screwed he was just in the back he was just seeing everything you know even as an adult he would actually imagine himself being on stage he only basically was like one hit wonder because there was a certain incident that happened i know i should have done a review for this movie and somebody told me i should and i didn't and now i totally regret it because otherwise i would have directed you to that to that video all right you guys we're halfway there coming in in fifth place would be prime videos troop zero it's another movie that stars alice and Janie. this movie actually came out earlier in the year and it is super super memorable super super cute you guys i truly truly enjoyed this movie um ever since i've seen it i really just cannot stop thinking about it even from the moment that i saw the movie i think i said in my review that it's one of my favorites of the year so far that's probably gonna make it to the end i don't know if it'll make it to the end but so far it's made it halfway through now uh, besides ellis and janie it does also star by ola davis jim gaffigan mike epps a very beautiful McKenna Grace would be the star of the movie playing Christmas. And this movie really is just about being the outsider. It really is for the awkward kid. And like I said it in my review, if you do happen to have a kid who is not necessarily into all the in things and is into the strange things um, per one may think but to them it's very very normal um and they may have low self-esteem i think this is a great great movie to uh watch with them this is a great family film you guys i feel like it's just such a a great message for kids for acceptance to accept um yourself who you are and accept what you like you know just being happy with who you are and not really caring what society has to think about you if you want to be in this case the strange little girl who is in love with science and wants to join like their version of the girl scouts to win the opportunity to record a message that's going to be going into outer space because she just absolutely loves space now when all the other troops just turned her away when she wanted to join their troop she didn't really let this put her down you guys she did something about it and she made up her own little troop moving on to number four and this is becky and i don't think that this is a surprise for many of you because i have talked such great things about this movie i know that I'm pretty sure actually that this movie is not going to be on anybody else's list. It had violence, it had a kick-ass, murderous, psychotic little girl. It had a lot of gruesome deaths in here. Is it the greatest, most technically correct movie? No, and I've said this so many times, but again, this is just my list, you guys. And I truly, 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 truly enjoyed this movie. Since I've seen it, I have not stopped talking about it. Now, Kevin James for his first, like serious role is a freaking Nazi. Now moving on to number three would be Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. Now this movie stars Matthew McConaughey, Colin Farrell, Michelle Dockery, 
Charlie Hunnam, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing their names wrong, and Hugh Grant, you guys. And this is such a Guy Ritchie movie. Mind you, I've only seen about four of his movies, I think it's it's been. Um, I did not like his movie from last year, which was Aladdin. And this movie is about uh, Mickey, who is played by Matthew McConaughey, who is an American who moves to London and ends up building the biggest marijuana like empire and now this movie did not do as well in the box office but i think it is actually doing better now that it is on demand with my number two pick and that would be disney's onward i i don't remember if i cried i think i may have got teared eye i don't think i full-on cried did i full-on cry yeah no i'm a crier you guys no i think i did not full-on cry with this movie you guys which may have affected my score with it a little bit this was such a fun movie you guys if you have again if you haven't seen it really recommend it it is um on disney plus right now we're a little bit like in a magical universe and all these like magical creatures as time has gone on and as technology has been incorporated and like modernization has been incorporated into their everyday lives the once magical special element that really made them into fairies and um centaurs and elves and uh dragons and this other chinga that i can't even remember all the damn creatures that are part of it uh unicorns you know that really got lost within you know the decades the years the uh, centuries and now they're just very modern and they have really no magical powers anymore like all the magic really is sucked deep inside of them because of centuries and generations of not practicing you know but it's still part of them um and it's just so funny because like the unicorns are kind of like like crackheads or like homeless and it looks super super crazy you guys but it's just such a fun story uh where we're going on a quest we have guinevere uh which is the van and and guinevere is very loyal uh a uh, stallion up until the end and um i was wondering when an accident was gonna come on to be honest with you yeah no way my terrible accents i don't think i've come up here with an accident in quite some time you, know, you guys which i know that a lot of you are like thank god it's a quest of two brothers trying to find a certain stone to finish a spell to get the rest of the dad you know popping uh to get their the, their day with them because the dad did pass away the ending of it honestly you guys was such a surprise go ahead and get on with my number one pick which a lot of you are gonna be like seriously yes the hunt would be what i consider to be the best of 2020 so far oh my god if you are still with me you guys i it's, it's a, a satire movie it was a very controversial movie. This movie was originally supposed to come out last year, but it kept getting um, held up. And then like certain situations happened. I can't even remember what it was. I think there might have been like a shooting, maybe. I can't remember, but it kept getting pushed back. Um, and then of course, Corona happened and was released on a uh, video on demand. And I really, really was here for it. It does star Betty Gilpin and Hilary Swank. And Betty, she is a kick-ass chick in this movie. Like, Becky is very gruesome. There are a lot of murders that happen. A lot of blood and guts. And just a bunch of, like, everything. It makes fun of, like, politics. Making fun of both sides. It's just some rich people grabbing a bunch of, like, real low lives to hunt them you guys like like pigs like hounds like you know for the sport for the heck of it you guys again such a kick-ass female lead hillary swank even that she plays athena and she was a great villain i mean there's an awesome fight scene between these two again like i said this many times i'm not a delicate person and i don't get offended by things like this but if you are one of those people that do get offended then stay away from this movie because more than likely this movie will offend you so this is a my list of what i consider to be the best of 2020 so far please do not diss my list because you don't like it or you do not agree with it but what you can do is just comment down below you guys and let me know what you consider to be the best of 2020 but that is all that i have for you guys of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new where are my glasses at let me put them back on because i'm blind bitch so next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.